So it's a pleasure to welcome Mr. Vinkran's people who will uh, give today his first lecture on, of the mini course on an introduction to the IF. Okay, first of all, I want to thank the organizers who invited me this. I was in Ottawa 20 years ago, invited by Michel Racine. And now, whether I should be, I'm not sure I'm happy or not happy because I'm here for his early retiring. But I hope that he is not going to, to give up mathematics and to continue to have this as a hobby, not as a profession. So, uh, um, speaking about PI algebras, First of all, I want to, to tell that uh, I follow more or less my book with Formanek. So this is introduction. To PI algebra. Maybe I should write my name also here. And I follow my book with Formanek. Which is called Polynomial Identity Rings. Which was 2004 in Birkhäuser. The book consists of two parts because this is very difficult to write a joint book. So we have two half of the books, and I follow more or less his part of the book. <laughs> so the first thing I want to give some motivation, some history of PI algebras. About motivation, so we are looking for some class. So, uh, so the problem I start this is. Something naive is stated and, and um, quite general. So find a class of rings or algebras which is big enough to be studied and small enough. to have an, in, an interesting theory. So this is something which is, of course, all we more or less do as professional mathematicians. And I want to tell some example of a good theory. So example of such kind of theory. This is when we consider finite dimensional algebras of a field. So R, this is a finite dimensional associative algebras, algebra over a field, a field K. So you have several typical results which I want to mention. One of them is that the algebra contains some ideal. There is this an ideal J of the algebra, such that the factor algebra is semi-simple. So we split the problem to study finite dimensional algebras in two parts. To, to, to study the radical, so this is the Jacobson radical, and to study the same or simple algebras. For the second part, when this is a semi-simple, this is a direct sum of simple algebras. So S, I are simple. They simply have no ideals. The next thing is that H simple algebra is simply isomorphic to the matrix algebra over some division algebra. So G, I, this is a division algebra. And of course, when k is algebraically closed, then we simply have that d, j, this is the field itself. And one more thing to, to mention that the radical is neopotent. This means that some power of the radical is zero. 
And finally, I want to mention one more thing that the radical splits. So R, this is a direct sum as a vector space of the radical, so this is as vector spaces. A direct sum of the radical and the factor algebra. So you have here uh, some nice description of finite dimensional algebras. And it would be nice, of course, to have some, uh, some class of algebras which is bigger than this class, but not too much bigger to have m more or less these properties. Of course, another example. This is when R is commutative. I would finally generate it. And here you have all nice properties which we know in commutative algebra. So PI algebras, PI, this abbreviation for polynomial identity. This is a generalization of both these notions, finitely dimensional and commutative. So this is some generalization. Because um, before to give some examples, I want to give something to tell a, a couple of words about the history, or maybe the prehistory. Pierre algebras they appeared not in algebra but in projective geometry. So origin projective geometry. You know that when you have in, um, in projective geometry, so if P is a projective plane, you know that the, um, the desired theorem In the classical case, gives that maybe I, I want to draw a picture. So you have two triangles A, B, and C, and the other this is A1, B1, C1. And if you know that uh, the three lines A, A1, B, B1, and C, C1 intersecting in the same point, then um, um, the three lines, straight lines which go in the, so these three, sorry, yes, and these three, they also intersect in one point, they lie on the same line. So if, the, if, the, if you have A, A1, intersect B, B1, intersect C, C1 in a point O, then you have that the intersection point of A, B, and A1, B1. So then this is given, and you have this. For example, this is P, A, C, and B, C, and A1, B1 present in Q. B, C intersects B1, C1 in R. Then you have that P, Q, R, are on the same line. And, of course, not all projective geometries satisfy this condition. But um, if the desired theorem holds, in P, this is equivalent that P, this is something which is Okay, isomorphic on some. Um, um, so D, this is a division algebra, a division ring, and you have co n n the coordinates. You, you build from this division ring some projective plane. So only in this case you have this equivalent to the desired theorem, and you have another theorem which is. The theorem of Papus Pascal.
which states that if you have two lines and you have three pairs of points A, B, C and A1, B1, C1 and if you um, consider the intersection point of um, these six lines sorry, not this one, but this one and also we need something from B1 so and this one these three points, they live in the same line Okay, in my picture they are not in the same line, but almost. <laughs> so, this theorem imp implies that D is commutative. And, <coughs> should I continue here or it's okay? So, In 1922, Max Den, he's a German geometer, but also knowing in some work on group theory, he asked the question in some paper called, some, with the title, some created projective geometry, he asked the question, find conditions on D, on the division algebra, with the property that such that D is commutative. And for example, he proved a theorem which is the following that if for any x and y from D um, um, we have that as some Aij x in power y in power j is zero, where i, a, j are fixed elements of the base field, k, so they don't depend on, e, on the pair x and y, then these commutative so here you have of course there exists a i j different from zero otherwise so here you have some polynomial which is a non-commuting variable which vanishes when you put x and y to be elements from d and later in 1936, in 1936, Wagner, who was a student of then, he published a paper with exactly the same title as the title of his advisor, where he, it, it was considered to be the first paper, really algebraic paper, although it was the, the source was, so it was the first the first real paper on PIL algebra, on polynomial identities. <laughs> 